Hi everyone, thanks again for joining me on Seward for Good. Today I am talking about the do's and don'ts of substrates. Now the substrate is the most important piece of waterproofing. If you don't know what you're working on, you don't know how to tackle it. And the biggest number one don't that you do with substrates is assume. Assumption is the mother of all And the problem happens is that when you think that the substrate is what you believe it is, but not 100% certain, and then you start working on it, you inherit the problem. And we see this time and time again, where contractors or builders assume that because they've seen on another job, they can just go and tackle it. I'll give you a really good example. If I ask you right now about Blueboard, very well known product around the country, how many times have you seen that in applications where waterproof has been asked to waterproof it and then to be tiled over, but if you actually find out from the substrate manufacturer, can you do that? Then you might find out it's completely different than what you're being asked to do. So it's really important to check all these details out. Don't assume a substrate can be waterproofed or tiled just because it presents itself on a building site. And I'm talking about now all products, not just the grip set range, this is for you as a waterproofer and the industry in general. Now the other situation is often with substrates with assumption, is that a contractor may be using a product they could be using it every day of the week any brand and it all goes well then they have one job with a bucket or a couple of buckets they've used and things go pear-shaped and they start going oh there's a problem with that product but have they actually investigated what might be different what's the common denominator here if using the same product from the manufacturer and you're never having any issues and then you have one problem on one job is it the actual product or is it the substrate and we've seen that sometimes where substrates have been assumed that they can actually be tiled over or waterproofed or primed. And how are they primed? Dense concrete. Good example here. I remember many, many years ago, there was a concrete substrate. And with most concrete substrates, you would use a water-based primer because you get absorption in there and it locks it in and you can prime. But this substrate was so dense, the primer wouldn't absorb into it. It was like precast concrete. It needed an epoxy primer, it needed to be prepared, it needed to be etched. And what had happened was they went with a general water-based primer, put a sheet on top of it, and it just came up. And they couldn't understand why. And they were blaming that the sheet didn't have adhesion, the contractor hadn't done the job properly, but it was the substrate itself. And understand your substrate. The other thing is prior knowledge, okay? Whenever you're working on a surface, we talk about this in our GAP programs, you should understand what the manufacturer's requirements are. We've spoken about this before. Hardy's with Skyon, with what they recommend, and it's a very widely used product out there compared to another cement sheet manufacturer, BGC is another one coming to the market, we see lots of, or CSR. They may have subtle differences in terms of how they're fixed, how they're prepared, and how you work over them. However, how many times does everyone just go and tackle it the same way? understand that and this data is all available to you because every manufacturer has their data sheets and you should have that either in your phone in your ipad at access or hard copies and if you're confronted with a situation you talk to your client you talk to your builder and say to them so they understand and then you're passing on the learnings to them because no two substrates are exactly the same and i'll even talk about things like screeds you might be going over a screed and you may not have applied that screed it could have been done by someone else do you know what's in the screen? Has there been an additive in there? What level of cement is in it? What's required? What's underneath the screen? These are all questions you need to understand and assumption is the biggest no-no when you work on that. Are you ready to find your point of difference? Are you ready to position your workers and business as cutting edge waterproofers? GAP qualifies you to practice the waterproofing trade with a high level of skill and expertise backed by the manufacturer. So what are you waiting for? Be part of the change and find your point of difference among the rest. Thank you and enjoy the rest of this week's episode of Sealed for Good. So once you've established that the substrate is suitable for the application, then it's important that you inspect it carefully because as soon as you start surface preparation and priming, then it's your job, it's your baby and you own it. So inspect it. You know, from afar you might look at it and go, yeah, this looks okay, but actually you may need to get down on your hands and knees and look at it have tools with you. Simple things like sponges, cloths, white, white wet rags where you can wipe over it and see what residue might come across it. The water droplet test. Is it absorbent? Is it porous? How long does it take to absorb in? 
saw a classic this morning on social media where there was a guy that went on site and the paint had spray painted inside the room and all these residues were on the concrete floor and he had to grind it all off, started the application with trying to put it down and realized the primer wasn't bonding to it and then had to grind it all off. These are little things that you cannot assume just because oh, I've got a product that's got very high adhesion, it'll bond to whatever's there. These are the things that go wrong with waterproofing and it compromises all applications. And whether you're a student just getting into this, you're a seasoned campaigner, you're a builder, you could be even a lecturer that's actually training others, this point cannot be stressed enough. And I don't care what product you use out in the marketplace, if you're using Gripset or another brand, this is the part that if you get it right, you then have a very good chance to continue and have a successful waterproofing application and our buildings become generational value. If you'd like to know more, you know where to come, 1-800-650-435 or gripset.com. Remember, Gripset's still for good, hashtag Gripset's still for good, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.